Hi, and welcome to today's Artifact Introduction. I'm Jason Mazzala, the Senior Manager of Restoration and Maintenance here at Flying Heritage and Combat Armor Museum. And today, I'm going to introduce you to our Grumman F6F-5 Hellcat. The Hellcat was developed in 1942, and it was the newest carrier-based fighter intended to replace the Grumman F4F Wildcat. The Hellcat was purpose-built to combat the Japanese Zero Fighter, which was dominating the skies in the Pacific at the time. Due to the aircraft's speed advantage at any altitude, the Hellcat proved to be effective over the Zero and turned the tide of the war in the Pacific, making it the most successful fighter in World War II history. The Hellcat had more victories than any other U.S. fighter in any theater of war whether it was the European theater or Pacific theater, with over 5,000 victories. Let's walk around and have a look at our Hellcat. The first thing that we'll notice here is the size of the airplane. It's really, it's really a large airplane, really rugged. Grumman built their, their aircraft really, really tough and rugged, and they were kind of known for that. You'll notice how tall the airplane is. To get on the airplane, we have a footstep here and a handhold here and just to demonstrate you can see it's quite a stretch to get up there the pilot then has to step from here up onto the wing i'm going to forego getting on the airplane because the wing flaps are down we have the flaps down to show you a little bit about the wing flap system and some interesting tidbits and this trailing edge here is really fragile so i don't want to break the airplane otherwise i would hop up there talking about the wing flaps you can see there's, there's a couple of things. There's actually three things that are very interesting about the Grumman Hellcat wing flaps. The first thing is you notice the inboard flaps are made out of metal and the outboard flaps are made out of fabric. The inboard flaps being more rugged, they need to be a little more sturdy. They're right in the propeller stream for one. And you have pilots and crew getting on and off the airplane. So they're just, they're just a lot more rugged than the, the uh, lighter fabric flaps. Now, as far as operation goes, one thing that was really interesting and, and really helped the, the pilot with in-flight operations with the uh, wing flaps are two different things. Number one, they have a, a spring system in it that keeps the pilot from exceeding the flap speed. So there's, there's a certain airspeed that a pilot can go at a certain flap setting, certain degrees of flaps. So what the Hellcat had was these large springs. And if you can look in here, and maybe even if we dip under the wing, I'll be able to show you right here. You can see this large spring here, and there's one on each flap. And so what that does is that overrides the, the wing flap actuator. So the pilot can select flaps down, but if he's going too fast for that setting, then these springs allow the air pressure to overcome the flap actuator and, and system and actually retract the wing flaps just from the airflow. Let's go back out and we'll talk about the wing flaps a little bit more. So the second thing with the wing flaps, as I demonstrate, here's the spring pressure and you can see they're movable as opposed to, to other flaps that once they're down, they're, they're solid. You can't really move them. These ones you can pull up with the spring. The second thing, as I was saying, is that it has an, an airspeed switch basically. So there's a, uh, the way you actuate these flaps is an electrical, an electric switch. And so you select flaps up or flaps down. And what the pilot can do is select flaps down with that switch. And if he's going too fast, which I believe the, the max flap speed on the Hellcat is 170 knots. So if he's going over 170 knots and he knows he's going to need flaps, or if he's using flaps below 170 and he exceeds that, there's a switch that is connected with the airspeed indicator that will override the actuator and let the flaps either extend or retract accordingly. So it's really kind of automatic. It's, it's, it takes a lot of the work in aerial combat away from the pilot. 
he can put the flaps out if he needs to have them out during dog fighting and maneuvering. And then if they need to come back up, he doesn't have to worry about watching the airspeed and protecting the flaps. He can just fly the airplane, get into his dog fight and take that one thing off of his mind, which is really good. So as we walk around and look at the ailerons, you can, you can see that the airplane again is really, really large. Um, you know, an average height individual like myself has no problem walking right under the wing. Um, and that's pretty typical for a carrier based airplane. They're, they're really tall, really rugged. You can see the pitot tube hanging out uh, all the way out here on the right wing. As we walk inboard here, we get to the armament. So the Hellcat had six 50 caliber machine guns, three in each wing. Having a look at the landing gear here, you can just see how rugged it is. It's a, it's a very, very bold and robust landing gear with very tall struts. The, the, capa the height capability of the landing gear um, is, is, it really lends itself to being a carrier-based airplane. The gear retraction on this is, is uh, not conventional, so it's like the Corsair or the P-40, and the landing gear actually twists as it goes into the wheel well. So um, this gear will actually, or I'm sorry, this wheel will actually be sitting 90 degrees once it gets up into the wing, and it just sort of rotates as it goes on up. Making our way to this big, massive engine, the Hellcat has a 2,000 horsepower Pratt & Whitney R2800-10W on this model. And uh, it's a radial engine, and the radial engines are air-cooled, unlike some of the, the inlines of the V12s, which are liquid or water-cooled and have a radiator a lot like your car. Uh, this airplane engine just uses airflow through it to cool the cylinders and uh, ultimately the, the engine. These are called the cow flaps right here, uh, as in cowling flaps, and they regulate the airflow through the cowling. So uh, as the air cools the cylinders, whether you have these flaps open or closed dictates how, how hot or cold your cylinders are gonna be. So we'll stop here next to this 13 foot, one inch massive propeller on the Hellcat and talk a little bit about this airplane's history, about the history behind the flying heritage Hellcat. So our Hellcat being a Dash 5 was produced late in the war and although it was actually stationed at Pearl Harbor when the war ended, it never saw combat. After the war, the military used this airplane as an all-weather trainer and then eventually for about a five-year period of time used it as a remote control drone for target practice and through the five years it survived. It eventually made its way into civilian hands and changed owners a few times. It even at one point made a flight from Kansas all the way to England to be with its current owner at that time. And so it made has a, a quite a journey under its belt. Eventually, it was acquired here at Flying Heritage and in 2013, the talented crew of aircraft mechanics brought the airplane back to life and put it back into flyable condition, which you can see fly right here at Flying Heritage. So we walk around the, the massive three-bladed propeller, we can see there's more doors underneath the, uh, underneath the, the airplane here. And, uh, this door here, there's, there's two of these, one on either side, and those are the intercooler doors. Those cool the air that are uh, going to eventually get to the carburetor. And this big door here is the oil cooler door. And uh, so there's, a, there's an oil cooler that sits inside here and, and any, uh, most airplanes, all airplanes of, of this era all had an oil cooler. And it's, it's like a, a radiator, like a water radiator in your car, but it, it, uh, it cools the oil rather than the water. And so this is, this is how you regulate the oil temperatures with this door. Same principle as the, as the cow flaps. If the door is open, there's more airflow. The cooler your oil gets, you close the door and, and the oil is, uh, you know, tends to warm up at that point. 
and we make our way back to the tail. And again, you can just see how rugged that Grumman built their airplanes and the Hellcat was no exception. It was, it was uh, commonly referred to or affectionately known as the Wildcat's big brother. And it did just that. It showed up and it started beating up on everything that was over there in the Pacific. And you can just see all the, all the rivets and, and rivet lines in the fuselage. And there was uh, just a lot of structure here. So one thing you'll notice being a carrier based airplane is that it has a solid rubber tailwheel. The solid rubber tailwheel could take a much harder impact and was, was just a lot more rugged, just like the rest of the airplane. And uh, they purposely made those solid for carrier operations. And lastly, we'll move back to the tail and look at the uh, elevators and the rudder. With the exception of the inboard flaps, all the control surfaces are fabric and um, the tail services, the empennage is, is no exception to that. All of the controls on the Hellcat had trim tabs. They were all controllable. So anytime you, you needed to trim the airplane in flight, uh, you could do that. The elevator trim is, is quite large as you can see. Elevator tab has a lot of surface area to it. So it was also very effective. At the very end, figuratively and literally, we have the tail hook and on the Hellcat, the tail hook sat inside the tail of the fuselage here. And so how this would work is it was controlled by an electric motor. And so when the pilot would select uh, the tail hook to come out, um, it is going to essentially just extend straight back. And then when it gets to the end of its travel, it hangs down quite a bit to catch that wire on the aircraft carrier.